Greetings and salutations, everyone. This is Lightstar, and I hope you guys are all having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful holiday season so far. So today, I want to share another light language activation, and this one is going to be more on the grounding side of things, because as I was tuning in to my intuition and to my guides and my um, higher self and to my counsel that I really go to to get information regarding what's happening on a more of a global level, more on the consciousness of the uh, maybe an undercurrent or something that's happening underneath the surface, but that it's affecting a lot of people. And what I'm feeling at this time is that there is this undercurrent of fear. There's an undercurrent of uh, just a general sense of being people feeling very ungrounded and very unstable um, due to the instability of what's happening. I know in the United States, but that doesn't always, you know, that's not just that's just the United States. We're we're looking at everything across the board. Of course, that affects uh, a lot of other countries as well. But I want to say it's just been this undercurrent of fear, instability. Um, this also, there is some feelings of like, what am I going to do? You know, what do I do? Where do I go? Um, what am I going to do? Am I going to have enough um, in the financial uh, sense of things? You know, is there enough? There's this sort of lack mentality. Uh, there is fear of losing uh, what you have, not having enough, a lot of questions about that. Um, and also this this really drives it all the way down into sort of the first chakra. So that's why we're going to focus on that because that's what the first chakra has to do with is stability and also you you feeling grounded in the in the chaos that surrounds you in your personal life as well as in you know humanity and your environment and what we're feeling is going on with everybody just in a general sense so um, this is why I wanted to focus on this particular language uh, to really drive that kind of sense of groundedness and um, also wanting to share you know there's a lot of us sort of feeling having this feeling of shutting down a little bit so we're kind of coming into this shell let's just say you know, sometimes when we feel very unstable or ungrounded and things are shifting and you don't know what's going on, there's a tendency to sort of just, it's like going into your bed and cover, putting the covers over your head and crawling into a little ball and just being like, oh, okay, this is the one place I know I'm safe. And I, although that is actually beneficial to do sometimes because there are times where you just need that. You need that comfort and you need that uh, one place that you can go whether it's there whether it's in the shower whether it's outside underneath a tree but just going to feel some semblance of stability you know for a lot of you it's going to be meditation uh, it's going to be quiet time that kind of thing is very needed and very beneficial for everyone at this time to kind of go there but sometimes there's also a little bit too much of that walling off, closing down, shutting off because, you know, not really knowing what the next step is or coming from fear. So we want to sort of loosen that up a little bit with this. And that's why I wanted to do uh, this language as well. So uh, I want to also address um, something that one of my wonderful clients asked me to address on one of my videos. So I decided to do that here. And that is some of the after effects of uh, light language and actually how light language can affect your um, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional bodies. So I wanted to address some of that because I noticed that when I do these uh, type of activations for people in the general sense, I you know get comments and different feedback from people having different experiences and that is why I don't really say uh, before my videos about what you're gonna be receiving what you're gonna get what you're gonna feel how you're gonna feel because that is completely individual and up to you but over the course of time I have noticed there are some kind of similar uh, sensations if you will and reactions that tend to happen from light language. 
So on previous videos, I've also shared about what lang light language is or the language of light, galactic uh, you know, language, universal languages. Um, so I've shared a bit about what it is, what it does, um, so you can review a little bit more in detail, but just in a general sense, it's actually an activating language. Um, these are languages that we all, um, that are starborn especially, already know how to speak, many of them, if not just one, which is your mother tongue, and the languages that can, uh, it's more frequency, they're more energy, they're not uh, like the languages, per se, that we have here in um, our world where um, they're to be interpreted necessarily word for word. So there are different, uh, different types of languages and all different types of languages and frequencies. Some of them are tones, some of them are just sounds, some of them, it, it's, it just runs the gamut. And they are being used by different people um, on this planet now as we all start to remember and open the veil of remembrance. They are being used in different ways, okay? So there's many different ways um, that you can use the languages. And I uh, actually teach a light language class in my Sacred Keys Acceleration System all about elevating frequency codes through light language which is where we will also share in that where you are being called to use the language. If you're being called to use it and you're not sure or you're just starting to speak the language and you don't know what you're supposed to be doing with it, we identify what your purpose, your specific purpose is uh, for using the languages. It's a little bit different for everyone. So, um, so having said that, uh, let's dive into this a little bit. So. For instance, okay, if I am speaking the language and a language, doesn't matter which one because it's going to obviously be different for different people, especially with the different languages, but here are just some common, um, I would say, sensations that people will feel. Sometimes you will feel a type of tingling sensation in the head area. It might also be pressure, okay? So some people have experienced it being feeling like it's a little bit of pressure and or a tingling sensation. What is happening in the general sense is that the energies and the frequencies of the languages are actually coming into that particular chakra area. And when it actually comes in and the frequency comes into that area and it hits some kind of, uh, let's just say, I don't want to hesitate to use the word blocks, but sometimes it is blocks, but sometimes it's just energy that's kind of stuck in there and the energy needs to kind of move. And the light language that I use is healing and it helps to kind of move that energy out of the way <laughs> so that you can actually have an opening and, and that uh, area can be a little bit more, um, I don't know, more of an enlightened kind of feeling, a lighter sensation. So it can kind of move some of that out of the way, the heaviness. So that's why sometimes the pressure feeling, it's just that, and the best thing to do in that case is really to just breathe and try to breathe into the area that you're feeling that because that pressure sensation can be felt anywhere. It's not just the mind or the head area, just a lot of people have a lot of this um, constraints in the, the mind, limitations, um, things that want to, your chakra wants to open up and, and remove those limiting belief systems, right? But you're still holding on to them. <laughs> no, 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 I need that one. You know, I'm gonna need that for later <laughs> because you're afraid to release it. So sometimes it's just the resistance to what the language is trying to open up and it hits that. So that's one thing that can happen. Again, that can happen anywhere in uh, your body where you might feel a little bit of pressure, you might feel a little bit of heaviness or tension or something. Uh, another area you might feel something is the throat. The throat may, um, that's one of our main communication centers. And so sometimes it actually will either t have that tingling pressure sensation, you might feel hot, might feel cold, it might feel whatever, it is for you, but there might be a sensation in the throat area because that energy or that frequency is also moving into that particular chakra as that is where it's needed to go. The languages that I speak, just they go where they need to go. That's why it really is very across the gamut about what you're gonna feel, what you're gonna sense, um, how it's gonna come across to your body. 
it's like a it's like a honing signal and it just knows right where to go um, where it's needed for this particular moment in time so the throat will um, we need to you know expand the throat we need to a lot of us need to have that throat expansion so that we can actually speak our truth so that we can start to speak from a place of power instead of disempowered or hiding it away or not you know being heard or sometimes people actually are too much heard <laughs> if you know what i mean and they need to tone it down a little so if you're one of those people um, and there's no judgment on any of this but so many people are like way too outspoken and there is a balance between being outspoken and being balanced with it so sometimes you may need to you know kind of tone it back a little bit and let somebody else speak and let someone else have a chance to kind of and, you know, so maybe getting into more active listening is a better thing for you in that case versus the other people who know they need to speak up and you know who you are. <laughs> it's going to be pretty obvious. But the sensation in light language might uh, hit this area as um, because of one of those reasons. And um, another uh, common, I want to say, is right sort of in the, in the heart chakra um, where the opening is happening where people feel like, oh, I felt that right in the heart and it just kind of expanded. Usually you feel an expansion, but again, if it's hitting something against something that you're resisting, you might feel that pressure against it for just a bit, okay? And then also in the stomach area, which is the empowerment, uh, where a lot of you have uh, difficulties or needing to step up into your power centers a bit more, so being in that, that power center, so you're gonna feel it right there, okay? These are some of the physical places that you might feel it. It could be anywhere. Um, some of the emotional things that might happen when you hear light language or experience it is that you might actually have some emotions come to the surface. This could be during, it could be after. It could be the next few days after, um, wherever it wants to come out because sometimes it dislodges, the language uh, frequency will dislodge some of the, let's say, some of the emotional things that you've been holding back or haven't been expressing, and it may come to the surface. And so you may struggle with that within your own self, but it also may need to come to the surface and you may need to cry. You may need to get angry. You may feel that, you know, maybe you feel a little bit depressed or something for a little bit, ungrounded, or just that sort of uneasy feeling that you will need to process that, okay? Because that is part of your responsibility in this, in this process, is to actually um, filter and allow your body to, to bring up to the surface what needs to be examined, what needs to be altered, perhaps transformed into a different type of frequency um, most likely into the lower frequencies we're moving it into the higher frequencies that is the that's the trajectory that you want to be going on so if these things come up emotionally you know you feel like really sad or you just you know kind of want to cry or something then let it out don't be afraid to show emotion and don't be afraid to allow your uh, emotional self to actually have an expression it's really um, important that we allow that outlet. So emotionally, you definitely might be having some experiences with the languages. Um, you also might feel some, uh, or you might actually have some kind of dream in either that night or the next few nights or something that also is working through some of this, okay? It's not always just in the moment. Um, so if you don't feel anything, then uh, believe me, there is something that's happening, but you may not have an open door yet to that. You may actually need to have some in your dream time, and that's where some of the work will happen. So um, wherever it is for you, it's gonna be different, obviously, for everybody in every, every different way. You know, memories might, might come to the surface for a lot of you. Um, remembrances of home is quite common. You know, these different types of, wow, it just made me feel like I, I know it's familiar to me or something like that. And, uh, and also, too, when I say in the throat area, I have had, you, a lot of you will actually get activated. So you'll start to speak your own languages, your own mother tongues. I have a very strong uh, frequency activation for um, pushing buttons for other people somehow, some way 
to uh, be able to speak their own languages, okay? It just kind of opens up. It's really common and that might happen. It may not sound like the one I'm actually speaking at the moment, but it's gonna be something in you that's coming up because this is activating that to come to the surface. So um, with that said, there's some things that you can do um, that can actually help you in processing some of these things, okay? Now, I, I kind of use it as the journal it, um, bathe it and love it. So journal what you're experiencing, write it all down, make sure that you get um, a clear picture of what's going on with you and so that you have that written down, especially if it's in dream time. Um, bathe it, meaning get into the bath, into Himalayan sea salt bath, okay? If you are a client of mine, you will always have to do that because that is very important to the process of releasing. And then love it, meaning you really need to love the process. You need to love yourself through some of this stuff, okay? If you have an experience that comes into your body when I'm speaking a language and your body does something like this, a lot of you have that. It just does a little spasm or jerk or something like that. You don't know what that is. That is a process that your body is going through. The frequency is hitting your, your own frequency. It's um, going through a little refinement uh, and you're getting some kind of activation from it. Now that may actually filter in a little bit more so the next few days or so you may be having some processes. It's okay, let that happen. Allow yourself to clear, okay, some of, the, some of this. So with having that said, I'll probably talk about this more as I do each one of these videos for um, activation, but I just wanted to give you a little bit more on the uh, what may happen and how you can kind of address it. And uh, so that's that. Now, one thing I wanna share with this particular language is very, very, that I'm gonna do right now, uh, or in a few minutes. It's very grounding and it's definitely from, uh, what best I can describe it is kind of like almost pre-Mayan, because it is pre-Mayan, but it also came to me and they've called it, the best I can describe is called um, the Guardians. I wanna say maybe it's language of the Guardians, but it's definitely a Guardian language and it will feel very much tied to the earth and very grounding. So um, one thing I also recommend that this, this language is really helpful uh, to do is to get really grounded, uh, get a stone or something like that um, in your hands or in your lap or something like that. And just a grounding stone, meaning um, something like hematite, black tourmaline, uh, shivalingam, something that is extremely grounding and gonna sort of pull you into the earth. Now I am gonna share mine because, excuse me, this is my Shiva Lingam, okay? Now I love her, she's amazing, and oh my gosh, when I put this in my lap, it is literally as though I am taking up space. I am telling myself I am allowed to take up space here. I am going to sink myself into the ground, into the earth, and this is like very powerful to do right now because of all the ungrounded and chaos, you know, type stuff. Or the other one, I actually, I'm just sharing, I'm just doing a little share and tell here. This is my amazing tourmaline, black tourmaline, okay? This is, this is actually a museum piece. It's amazing. And not all of you are gonna have pieces that are gonna be like this huge or anything, and you don't really need it, but I just happen to love the powerhouse. <laughs> but a lot of you will have smaller pieces of it and you can just hold it, you can put it in your feet, you can put it in your lap, whatever feels comfortable to you. And it is incredible for uh, pulling your body into the earth and releasing some of the negative energies that need to go as well. Because that can happen as well from uh, the languages. So, having said that, I think we're ready to rock and roll here for a little bit. Um, oh, I did want to share something. Uh, well, I'll do that afterwards, okay? Let me just do the language first, and then I'll come back and share something else. So just take a nice deep breath and just kind of relax and um, kind of sink into the couch or wherever you're sitting and just experience whatever it is. This particular activation, again, is going to be tying you deeper to the earth, deeper to your, your legs, your feet. So putting the focus on your lower energies and really grounding yourself to the earth. 
and uh, feeling and experiencing whatever it is you experience from this. Mera sokumaya atatulia tatum, mara kurushuma, makututu mara makuma, duruku shorokuma karatumak, sutu gurushunu kura, gurushuma kurushuna turum, mera so maka amatuma, dushu maka anunturuna tara makuma, biro makaro kuruntaran, durukurshe maka tuturuna tayumam. Durukuma sha merokshu shoto tokura ma kokuma kusho makai to maka atunumanaran batimi to umaka matama sumaka ishu maka umana jurumendi isuma guru branda ora to manad yede dururu udun arma to rigiro duruma arma to omara to atrumam suma kura shamata niti sutu ukura to ni to rishin to rumakuma guru onto ro akuna tima Turu gudu o shana atarama, mesu umara kam o kumara toma, sho roto do mara tiri mako bakeri mitu, bero bakana ta oko, o kudu umata mara diuma, tu kudu do do son alamu tu kudu shin toma, kudu do oko ma katarini toma, sumata mo kudu shin mete tu shin ti o kuma kaka kiom, kudu oko o kaka kiom to o kuma, ke o kuwa su o kuma kishi. Sutu tu uma, suku ishi ukuma ka akatini ti, makum kuma tara, mera suku maya, makai misu maya, tu uma kara matuma, suoro re tu uma kai tu uma, tu shunte mi tu uma kam. Now just sink your body into the ground, feeling very very grounded. Very much tied to Mother Earth, very stable. Just feeling your body moving, shifting, changing, whatever that might be for you. And giving thanks for Mother Earth, for being here, for being able to bring your gifts and your talents and your mission here on the Earth to be connected with those around you those like-minded individuals, your tribe. Reconnect yourself with your tribe. So, just feeling the energy of that and staying in the energy of that, I just wanna share uh, a few things from my Magical Dimensions Oracle cards that I have my own creation. And I wanted to share a couple of cards that I picked before this particular video that I wanted to share with you. Now, I, this particular, um, these cards I shared, uh, picked two at a time because I was asking something in particular and this is what was coming. This is what, who we are working with at this time. The angelic realms and the, let me do it this way, sorry. The angelic realms, celestial assistance, as well as galactic guidance which is your starborn your star seed your star family getting assistance there so these are the two that we're uh, receiving information and, and help from I want to say I'm really getting a strong uh, sensation of um, reconnecting with your guides reconnecting with your angels reconnecting with the star friends that perhaps may maybe your connections with them haven't been as strong lately Perhaps maybe they've been interference coming in. And now is the time to really reconnect and reach out because I feel that these uh, frequencies of the angelics and the frequencies of the star seed be beings for you right now are very strong and very much wanting to reconnect and rebalance your energies and uh, receiving help from them. So don't be afraid to call upon them um, for assistance because they're really here for you right now. Okay. Also, um, there's a couple cards I chose just to see overall. I, another one that I chose or picked was isolation. Um, this is where I'm feeling this card came up. A couple of these cards came up in my last reading because it's kind of close and still the energies are happening where we need to reconnect. We need to reconnect to our, our people, our tribe. 
We need to connect to uh, feeling connected in community and stepping out and reaching out for um, assistance even from others. Don't be afraid to ask for help. This is, you're not alone. You never have been alone. And stop thinking that you are <laughs> because you're not. But you just need to step out into the out from under the comfort zone and reach out, okay? And then I also chose another card, which is the higher perspectives. And the higher perspectives is another card that keeps coming up because we need to look at things from the higher perspective instead of the lower dimensional realms that we are stuck in and a lot of the 3D mess that we have to raise ourselves above and start looking at things from other perspectives, why something's happening in your life, why something may not be looking as pristine as you would like, maybe there for a very good reason. And so we need to look at what is the higher meaning in this particular situation? What am I supposed to be learning from this situation? And really going into that instead of, God, why is this in my life? I hate this. I'm always having to deal with this, blah, blah, blah. We've done that. Now it's time to raise up into the cosmos and start to look at things from a different angle. And lastly, which is really important, is trust. Okay, this comes up as you know, we're, we're just all over the place right now. And so grounding this and coming back into a place of trusting yourself, trusting what you receive. I see this, you know, this issue, I want to say a lot with uh, clients coming to me that actually aren't sure about what they're doing or what they're receiving and not, not really trusting their own uh, guidance. So what I say is test it out. If you're wanting to rebuild that trust, then you need to test it out. Meaning you receive information, you ask, first of all, ask and we shall receive, we shall receive. So um, ask for information, ask for the guidance, have it come down, receive it into your body, write it down, journal it, or whatever you need to do to get that out to make sure that you've got it locked in to what the information is from your guidance. And then you need to test it out. Test it out, because that's how you build the trust back within, your, within yourself. You know, this card sort of exemplifies this, where she's sort of leaning back, not sure if there's anything there to catch her, like a net right there, not seeing there's this beautiful hammock, the pillow and everything. All you have to do is just kind of lean into that, and it's there. So just trust that you've got help there. Trust that you've got help there, remember? I mean, they're right here, as well as your higher self trusting yourself but also trusting in your guides that are right here to help you that's what they are for that's why they are here your especially your personal guides for god's sakes they're here to help you that's why they came here you know in this particular in in your energy field so having said all of this i hope you guys enjoyed this and um if you want to get more information about uh, my session work what i do um with personal sessions where I really popular uh, starseed alignment sessions that I do in three phases, um, where if you really wanna know where your soul is from and where you originated from, from the angelic elemental starseed, wherever, maybe another universe. And if you wanna find that out, definitely look at my starseed, uh, interdimensional starseed alignment sessions um, in three phases and you can do one or all three, it's totally up to you. Um, but the first one is the identification or discovery phase. Um, really helpful to help you get on your purpose, to find out what your purpose is and who you really are. And then I have uh, lots of other types of sessions as well, doing oracle, light language, chakra activations, um, my sacred keys for teaching different topics, as well as my um, jewelry that I sell as well, and my, uh, what else, my artwork, my goodness all my artwork for sale too on there so go check out my website at lightstarcreations.com and um, let me know if you have any questions on anything I I love you guys so much I just want to send you all love and light and assistance in grounding your energy pulling it into the earth staying really balanced and pulling that energy in again picking up your 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 crystals your stones whenever you feel out of balance but really sitting down grounding it in and really honing yourself into your own um, stability your own sense of footing on this earth 
And thank you, Mother Earth, for allowing us to be on this beautiful planet as well. So sending love and light from the galactics, the angelics, and the elementals. I love you guys. Have a wonderful holiday season. Blessings. Namaste.